At an early age, we're taught that the lion is the king of the beasts and that it lives in a pride. People have always been intrigued to know why lions are the only cats who live in family groups. Perhaps it's easier to bring up the cubs this way or to hunt together rather than alone. In some way, their rivalries, loyalties, their subtle and sometimes savage relationships keep the lion in its place as a top predator. I've come to Kenya's Masai Mara to unravel the lion's story. My first task is to find one. I'm fortunate to be with one of the best guides in the Mara. If anyone can find lions, it's William Chepkwani. William, what's your favorite animal? Uh, it's a lion. And, uh, well, it's a leopard. Oh, you like leopards? Well? Yeah. Have you seen one yet? Not yet. What, don't, what animals don't you like? Uh, just a hyena. I agree. Uh, <laughs> they eat everything. They eat the carcass and uh, dead, just only dead animals. Also, they're smelling all the time. <laughs> we'll search for hyenas another day. Right now, we're after lions. Lionesses are the color of dry grass. Out on the plains, they blend in so well with their background that they're difficult for their prey to spot. Adult males are more conspicuous and can spook the herds. They have the reputation of being lazy and living off the females. But it's an advantage to the whole pride if they stay well out of the hunt. That way, everybody gets to eat. The males are unrelated to the females and never stay in a pride for life. The females are all born into the pride and never leave it. They're the owners of their territory and keep the family together. Young males usually leave the pride with brothers or cousins, but if they're alone, they'll team up with other solitary bachelors. Either way, their friendships last for life. A group of males has a much better chance of taking over a pride than a single lion. It's one good reason for males to band together. But why are the females also social? I wondered if it had something to do with their prey. By working together, is a team of lionesses more successful than a solitary hunter? Wildlife cameramen are some of the best people to talk to about their subjects because they spend months, sometimes years, completing their films. I couldn't believe my luck when I heard that a well-known cameraman who'd filmed lions many times was here in the Mara. Simon King, as I live and breathe, here you are in Kenya. Hello. <laughs> lions. Tell me about lions. They are the best cats, that's what they are. Yeah, my absolutely. Favorite. How many have we got down there? To be honest with you, I don't know. This pride is quite new to me. Um, I can certainly see five, and I've seen them out on the marsh, and I've seen about 15, 16 in that group. So I would imagine hiding in the grass here, there are many more than you can actually see, but at this time of day, lying so flat, you can't see anything more. Is it this time of day because it's 
too hot for them to be doing anything else. Largely, they'll still react. If, if prey came through here now, they'll be up and they'll be hunting. Great opportunist, and so that's why I'm here. The trouble <laughs> is they can sleep and I can't. <laughs> it's so easy to look at them and, and to feel as though you could just go up and rub their tummies. Yes. They just look so cuddly if and I so gorgeous. If I do that, Simon... I'd get the film. <laughs> <laughs> would, would they eat human? Chances are they'd run, not because there's anything wrong with you, yeah, thank but, you because, very much. <laughs> but because uh, most of the lions here in the Maasai Mara are quite afraid of human beings. They have a, there's a great tradition of, um, how can we put it, there's a relationship between the Maasai and the lions which has led to a mutual respect. In the past, after their circumcision rituals, young Maasai warriors had to prove their worth as men by joining a lion hunt. When successful, they returned to their village and performed a special lion dance in celebration. Once the whole village would have joined in, but today the dance has lost its significance. Lion hunting is now illegal. The tradition continues, but mainly to entertain tourists. Many Maasai live mainly on a diet of milk and blood. Just as in the past, they still rely on their cattle, sheep and goats. They had good reason to kill lions since the big cats do occasionally hunt their domestic stock. The herdsmen told me that they still chase away lions, but troublemakers are now taken away to safe areas by the wildlife authorities. When the migrating herds of over a million zebra and wildebeest are in the lion's territory, life is easy. They kill medium-sized prey with a bite to the back of the neck, which severs the spinal cord. Larger victims are suffocated. This lioness has had a withered leg for over two years. She would certainly have died without the food and protection she receives from her pride. 
Group living benefits the injured female, but the lionesses doing all the hunting would be much better off without her. Solitary lionesses do as well as those living in a big pride. Although they catch smaller prey, they don't have to share it. But they're less successful at catching large animals. So Simon, why are lions social? Perhaps the most substantial theories is that being together they can tackle much bigger prey than if they were solitary. The trouble there, of course, with that is if they do catch something, there are many more mouths to feed, so it has a downside. Although I've, I've seen it in action, when there are lots of wildebeest here, there's really no need for the lions to hunt together, although they still do. Um, there's so much prey that there's no problem, but as soon as the wildebeest go, they're left with nothing more than a few warthog or the formidable buffalo. And uh, for a lion to tackle a buffalo on its own, it's got to be pretty special. And so when they're sticking together in a pride like this, they can tackle something the size of a buffalo and then they've got something like a ton of meat to share between them. Lions always go for the easiest option and a newborn calf is less effort than a fully grown adult. While this female was giving birth, the herd wandered off and are now some distance away. Somehow, she must keep the lions at bay and get her calf nearer the herd, but the odds are stacking up against her. Just as the lions close in for the kill, the herd comes to the rescue. One of the pride males has an injured hip. Three legs are barely enough to take him out of harm's way. seem to be turning, but the limping male does not give up. He's badly out of condition, desperate for food and convinced that the calf is his one chance of a meal. The lion escapes being gored, but only just. The young buffalo survives, but as a result, a lion cub could die. The cubs are always the last to eat and the first to suffer when prey is scarce. The harsh reality is that 80% of lion cubs die before they're two years old. At the end of the dry season, the lions will eat almost anything. They can get an ostrich egg into their mouths, just, but their jaws aren't strong enough to crack it. Sometimes the lion is more a knave than a king. They steal or scavenge almost 30% of their food. The cheetah's kill, a Thompson's gazelle, will nourish a single lioness. But a wildebeest calf is not enough to feed several mouths. When times are hard, even sisters will fight. They have to if they're to survive. With no lionesses to feed them, lions who have lost their place in a pride to younger, fitter males turn to desperate measures. Many a lion has died from infection as a result of getting porcupine quills deeply embedded in his mouth or paw. It's not just the males which suffer. This lioness is close to starvation. In times of drought, there's precious little food. The females do most of the killing, but get the least to eat because their pride males invariably claim the lion's share. She's now too weak to hunt. If the males can't provide food, they will all die. 
Sometimes it's hard to see what the females gain by having males around. Perhaps it's something to do with the cubs. To his own offspring, a lion is a gentle and tolerant father. All the females in this group are, are going to be related one way or another. They're going to be sisters, they're going to be aunts, they're going to be uh, mothers and children of one description. Any of the males, the adult males, are not going to be related at all. Now, by sticking together with an adult male, that big pride male makes sure that the youngsters are going to grow healthy and strong. But how does a male behave towards his cubs in times of hardship, when he's hungry and the kill is small? He won't let them eat, but he won't seriously hurt them. If food is limited, it's best that the males are well fed and strong. Only they can protect the pride. But protect them from what? Well, from other males wandering the plains looking for pride to take over. Perhaps this is a good reason why lions live in groups. To protect their cubs, the pride defends its territory by patrolling its boundaries and roaring. sprayed over bushes along the borders leaves a pungent message that lingers for days. For any strange male, the signs are clear. Stay away. This territory is taken. But there comes a time in every male's life when he must take risks. These bachelors are coming into their prime. They're ready to take over a group of females. It's time to make their move. The pride male will fight fiercely to protect his cubs, but this one has recently lost his male companion and is now alone. lions are sometimes killed in takeover fights, but usually it's a matter of numbers. The king is down. Long live the kings. Any immature males living with the pride are chased away too. They're just more mouths to share the food. The young males are threatened and it's not long before they're persuaded to clear off. is probably about four, five, six years old. Any older than that, they start to go downhill fast. It depends very much on the situation. In some areas, there are far fewer males around. At the moment, there are very few nomadic males here in the Mara. However, if he goes and another, pride ma another male comes in, his number one job is to kill all the babies. Now, that sounds horrible, oh, yeah. but 
Without doing that, he's looking after somebody else's interests, perhaps for some years, and he's only probably got two or three years as, as the pride male. The new kings are running out of time. They must act now. If the male's behavior seems harsh, perhaps the female's is even more surprising. The females, the mothers of those cubs, are going to come straight back on heat, going to come into estrus immediately. The minute the, ba the, the babies are killed? Yep. And because, again, it's in their interest to make the most of the new male's reign. They're not likely to conceive for, for at least three months. They can hold back on the, the conception. Female. Yep, they can hold back on, on actually conceiving. So. At about that time, they know that the males who are with them are going to hang around. They're tough enough. They're strong enough. They're going to they do the job. they hold the men off for three months. No, no, they, they keep mating. Them? They keep on. They keep on mating. Oh, they, oh, right. But they don't actually conceive. For, usually for about three months, and then after another three and a half months of gestation, the cubs are born, just in time for those fit young males to look after them and make sure that they reach adulthood. The lion will always be the king of the beasts. Here on the African plains, no other animal comes close. <laughs> 